Welcome to MySQL Databases and Python video course. In order to succeed in this course, you should be an intermediate-level Python programmer, and you do not need to have a prior SQL coding experience. In this course, you will learn how to set up MySQL databases in Python, how to monitor server status, administer database and manage data using MySQL Workbench user interface, how to create a relational data model using MySQL concepts of primary and foreign keys, how to import CSV files to MySQL tables, and finally, how to effectively manipulate and query data using MySQL relational data structures within your Python applications. I wish you a happy learning. You have probably heard of the MySQL term before. Have you ever wondered why we need it and how it is different from the notion of a database? How does it allow Python applications to interact with the database? In this lesson, I will illustrate the key concepts of MySQL on the example of the three datasets that you will be working with in this course. By the end of this lesson, you will learn what the MySQL system is and how it organizes data for efficient storage, management, and retrieval. Firstly, the MySQL system applies to structured data only. These data are organized in tables with rows and columns that represent so-called attribute values. They are typically stored in a tabular format that you are familiar with, such as Excel, CSV, or TSV. Here you see samples of tabular datasets. For example, a so-called movies dataset has movie attributes such as title, release year, genre, and collection and meal. Tabular data naturally invites statistical data analysis. However, Tabular formats come with their own limitations in regards to the number of rows they can store, and data volume never stays static. With a non-stop movie production, the records in ratings, movies, and reviews tables will grow in numbers. All in all, tabular data formats are not suitable for storage and processing of increasingly large volumes of data. MySQL uses a relational data modeling approach to capture relations between tables that represent entities. In the given example, entities are movies, reviewers, and ratings. In MySQL, a unique identifier is assigned to each row of the table. In so-called parent tables, this unique identifier is a primary key. You can see movie ID and review ID columns in movies and reviews tables playing a role of primary keys. Notice how they appear in the ratings table. A combination of movie ID and review ID uniquely identifies each rating and references it to a specific reviewer and a specific movie. This combination of primary keys is called a foreign key, and the ratings table is in essence a child table since it carries identities of both parents, movies, and reviewers. This is how parent-child relations are established in MySQL, and this diagram is a simple example of a relational data model. Another important concept of MySQL is a schema that is equivalent to a database. In MySQL, in order to build a relational database, you start with creating a new database. This means generating a schema that includes namespaces for tables, views, stored procedures, and functions. On the left pane, you see a newly created movie rating schema that has tables namespace. If you expand tables, you will see a newly created reviewers table with the predefined schema below. In this example, we checkmark PK and NN boxes, meaning that the reviewer ID column represents a primary key and it is non-null 
that is, it cannot have null values. The primary key is of integer type with a maximal length of 11 digits, whereas first name and second name attributes are of character type with a variable length of a maximum of 100 characters. At this point, we have completely defined the structure of the reviewer's table. We have specified its attribute columns, the primary key, and the attribute data types. This is what we refer to as a table schema. In this example, the schema has a name reviewers. In MySQL, every table follows a well-defined schema to ensure the consistency of data stored in these tables. Data consistency means avoidance of data entries that contradict the specified data types. For example, you cannot enter an integer value into the first name field. From a software perspective, MySQL is a computer program designed for an optimal management, storage, and retrieval of data, and for performing database administrative tasks. Also, it allows you to build Python applications with the MySQL database as the application backend. Here is a more in-depth illustration of the MySQL database management system. The server layer is the brain of the MySQL system. One of its components is a parser that interprets and validates the query based on SQL syntax. It is then optimized by selecting the right indices and rewriting the query if necessary. Also, the server layer manages client connections. When a client is connected to the server, a connection thread is created in the server layer. It handles the client-side queries executed by the thread. The client layer handles multiple client connections by creating a small pool of threads, authenticates a client through the use of client credentials, and checks if the client is authorized to run queries on the database. You have learned the key concepts of the MySQL system that will help you understand how to interact with the database from within your Python code in MySQL way. You have an understanding of the importance of a relational data model that consists of linked tables. The MySQL database management system leverages this model to perform efficient data storage, management, and retrieval operations. In the previous lesson, you learned that MySQL is a relational database management system that enables users to store, manage, and retrieve structured data efficiently. This lesson will guide you how to set up a local server on your computer. It is highlighted in orange color on this slide. Also, it will introduce you to a MySQL Workbench software. By the end of this lesson, you will be ready to manage data and to perform administrative tasks using MySQL Workbench user interface. As you may already know, these local host database servers are often used for developing software. They are designed to share the same data among different users on different computers. Firstly, let's download a MySQL server that is suitable for your operating system from the following website, dev.mysql.com slash downloads slash MySQL. Make sure that you are selecting the latest version for the operating system that you are using. For Microsoft Windows, you can download the server from a different website, dev.mysql.com slash downloads slash installer. This website contains wizard-like installation tools that automatically install the software for a 32-bit Windows OS. For a 64-bit system type, I recommend that you select the installer with MSI extension available on dev.mysql.com slash downloads slash mysql. 
Another least preferred option is a zip archive that requires manual installation. Next, make sure that you select the latest version of the installer from the drop-down menu. If you are new to the installation process, I will advise you to open dev.mysql.com slash doc website, click on MySQL server, followed by installing MySQL, and follow a paragraph that is relevant to your operating system. If you are a Microsoft Windows user, it's important to keep in mind that you have to select the correct version in the upper right box. It will then take you to the paragraph 2.3.3 on MySQL installer for Windows. During the installation process that takes care of itself, it is important to remember that your administrator name is root and your password. You will then use these credentials for an authorized access to the MySQL database from within your Python code. It is also helpful to set up tools like MySQL Workbench. Going back to the downloads site at dev.mysql.com slash downloads, click on MySQL Workbench. This link will take you to the same user interface that you had when downloading MySQL Server. From the drop-down menu list, you can grab a software package suitable for your operating system. MySQL Workbench is very useful as it will allow you to perform administrative tasks, such as root or other user account management. It will allow you to perform data import and data export to check on the status of your server. And of course, we would like to see it running to create a new database and to write and to execute SQL queries. Make sure that you have MySQL server and MySQL workbench installed on your computer. You will use the MySQL Workbench throughout this course to verify that certain database operations that you coded in Python worked. I encourage you to browse MySQL Workbench functionality and to get more comfortable with its user interface. It takes time and I wish you good luck.